Today I want to talk about Candy Green Gonzalez. She went missing from Prestonsburg, Kentucky. She was last seen June 1st, 2021. At the time she went missing, she was 36 years old. Um, I, I had actually already made a video about this and had never gotten around to uploading it. When I came across the clip that I wanted to talk about during the making of this video, so I decided to start over. Um, Candy Green Gonzalez was last seen near Prestonsburg, Kentucky. Gonzalez disappeared after wandering into the backyard of a property on Abbott Creek Road. She was visibly distressed and disoriented before running away into a creek. Um, I'm getting this from disappearedblog.com. Candy Green's background. Candy Green Gonzalez was from Paintsville, Kentucky, born December 1984 to parents Betty Jo and David Dixon. In 2009, Gonzalez graduated from Lexington Healing Arts Academy in Lexington, Kentucky with a therapeutic massage and body work certi certification. In 2011, she graduated from Spencerian College with a Bachelor of Science in Kinesiology. At the time of her disappearance, she was self-employed as a licensed massage therapist. She lived with her boyfriend of two years, Jeff Blackburn, in a house in Prestonsburg, Kentucky. She has a five-year-old son who she shared custody with with her ex-husband. On the afternoon of June 1st, 2021, Gonzalez was thrown out of the house by her boyfriend of two years from the house that they shared together. She sub subsequently wandered into the backyard of a property on Abbott Creek Road, less than a mile from her home. She was recorded by someone on the property pleading for help and asking people to call her mother. She was visibly distressed and disoriented. The calls made to her mother's phone went directly to voicemail. Gonzalez walked back and forth before eventually running through the backyard and into the creek. Gonzalez never returned home and has never been seen or heard from again. She disappeared without any personal belongings. She did not have a cell phone. She was wearing only a one-piece romper and sandals. On June 2, 2021, her family filed a missing person report with the Kentucky State Police when they could not contact her. Her shoes were found by family members near, in a nearby creek after her disappearance. Authorities conducted searches in the creek where she was last seen, using helicopters, drones, tracking, and cadaver dogs. But no signs of her were ever seen or found. Police found no evidence. They found no motive and no foul play in her disappearance. The case is ongoing, but there's currently no promising leads. A $10,000 reward is being offered by her family for information leading to her whereabouts. The circumstances of her disappearance remain unclear, and her case is currently classified as missing. Um, she was Caucasian, female, blonde hair, blue eyes, five foot eight, and weighs around one hundred and ten pounds. If you have any information regarding the disappearance, please contact the Kentucky State Police, Post Nine in Pikeville, Kentucky, six zero six four three three seven seven one one. Now there are resources here. Justice for Candy Green Gonzalez Change dot org. There's a couple of different Facebook pages dedicated to her and many media links WSAZ, WYMT, um, WBKO. There's just a lot of information out there. The reason I may wanted to remake this story is because the day that this happened, this woman, this is my personal interjection, my own personal 
thoughts and belief. I do not know the family. I do not know these people who were recording her. I do not know whose yard it was that she had wandered into and had tried to call her mother. But if you listen to the video and in this, uh, in the comments on this video, I will share a link. These people were not trying to help this girl. I, I read a comment that someone said, um, if you lived around here, you would know why people behave that way because of meth heads. Well, I don't know whether this woman was involved in drugs or anything like that. I, I don't know. But even if she was, she was visibly upset. She was asking for help. She was wandering around practically barefoot in just a pair of slipper sandals. She was, that I could see, she was of no threat to anybody. She was not armed. She had no... Uh, she was not threatening. She was not running through the yard grabbing things or acting as though she was there to be violent or trying to steal anything. You could hear her in the video asking, will you please call my mom? She was desperately wanting help. She knew, and this is my own personal thoughts on this. Now, I can't confirm this, but I believe she knew that someone was around somewhere and that they would eventually find her. This is the reason she ran into the creek. The woman is telling her, get out of my yard and go back up onto the highway. Go back up onto the road. Walk the roadway. Don't walk through the creek. Don't walk through people's backyards. Had these people simply called her over and said, come and sit down on the back porch Let's figure out what's going on here. Let's call your mom. Let's call the police. And just try to can keep her there for another five or ten minutes. It's a good possibility that this would have gotten resolved and she would be around today. You can hear the people in the video. You can hear one guy and as she's running off apparently into the creek saying there's copperheads down there. And it's like they're fun. It's funny to them. It's like they're laughing and joking about it. Even if this girl was on drugs, and I'm not saying she was, I'm saying why treat some other human being in that way to not try to get to the root of what's going on? They come out defensive. They've got their cell phone. They're recording. They're, the only thing on their minds in that moment was putting this on Facebook to show people, oh, did y'all hear about this crazy woman running around in our backyard? I guess they had no idea that later that day or that next day they would be, someone would come asking questions about what happened here because nobody can find her. Her family can't find her, and they can't locate her. What was their response then? I didn't see any recording of that. And it did upset me, and it does upset me. And my response back to this person was that I do live in this area, and I understand that there is a drug issue, and I understand that people want to be protective of their homes, but this girl was not, it was not 2 o'clock in the morning. She wasn't banging on windows. This was in the afternoon in broad daylight. She was asking them to help. She was asking them to call her mom. Regardless of whether she was under the influence of something or just under the influence of fear, adrenaline, whatever it could have been. In that moment, these people were just more concerned with showing their authority, you know? And yeah, it may have been your backyard, but it, it's the world that we all share, you know. And that's just my personal feeling. And if other people disagree, I, I guess I just have to say we'll agree to disagree on that. And I'll move on from that. But I am going to post a link to that video because I do want people to, to see how they would look at it. How would you look at this, you know? If this was your child, if this was your neighbor, your friend, your mom, whoever, um,
There was some talk that the boyfriend, that her boyfriend could possibly maybe have been involved, although, like the story said, there was no nothing to link anybody. They did find her shoes. Um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, and I would have to do further reading on this, but I do think that there were searches planned that maybe got scaled back due to weather problems or I can't remember, but I'll, I'll continue to read. This is from the um, website WBKO, Bowling Green, Kentucky, which is pretty far um, downstate from where this took place. This took place in eastern Kentucky, Floyd County, for six months. Betty Dixon has been anxiously waiting for a phone call where her daughter Candy Gonzalez is on the other end of the line. She was last seen in the Abbott Creek area of Floyd County, and she was last seen June 1st and has not been spoken to or seen again. It's devastating, said Dixon, not just for me as her mom, but her whole family and her son. Dixon says her grandson has really struggled without his mom. He's always asking about her and when she's coming home. You know what's really sad with the holidays. Now this was dated December 3rd, 2021. With the holidays coming up and Christmas almost here, you have a little kid who just wants the excitement of Christmas and Santa Claus. But when he sees a blonde-haired woman in the stores or walking around, he automatically thinks it's his mom. The family has spent the last six months going back and forth from Floyd County to Jessamine County to look for candy. They've held searches, hung flowers, all in hopes of finding answers. Nobody, unless you've been in this situation, understands the grief of a mother with a missing child. Through the sleepless nights and days of wondering what happened to her daughter, Betty says she is holding on to her faith that Candy is taken care of. Really, the only way that I would keep going is to put my trust in God. He is my strength right now. Um, this just goes on to talk about who to contact the state police and the reward that's offered. Um, let me see if I can find anything else. Like I said, there was some talk about what might have happened between her and the boyfriend that day. Um, he had a little bit of a history. Now, I'm not pointing a finger at him or saying anything because people's history does not necessarily mean that they, you know, are involved in something like this. But I will just say this. The boyfriend, now this is from the website, Social Media Links, Missing Persons Cases. Um, breaking news. Now this is, this was dated, let me see if I can find the date on this. July 8th, 2021. The boyfriend of missing Kentucky woman is a no-show for a polygraph. Candy Gonzalez has been missing since June of 2021. Um, this is a podcast or a blog. So it's more or less just talking about, We learned today that her boyfriend, Jeff Blackburn, has skipped out on his scheduled polygraph with the local sheriff. Here is what her family stated in a group dedicated to her. I would like everyone I would like to let everyone know that Jeff was scheduled to take a lie detector test Tuesday that he agreed to take weeks ago, but he did not show up. The investor the investigator went to his house six times and he would not come to the door. He called later and told them he was at his mother's. If that's if that's the case, how did you know a detective stopped by? When asked about his his appointment and why he didn't show up, he said, no one told me that it was for today, which was a lie. 
he was asked if he would just come on in and get it done. And he said, I'm not going to take one now because everybody already thinks that I did something. Now, personally, just let me say this. I personally do not believe... Oops. I personally do not believe that lie detectors are really, um, we well, all know they're not admissible in court, and um, if this man's involved in something to do with this girl's disappearance, and let's face it, in this world that we are living in, it's very likely that um, he might be, because it's almost... It's it's just too strange of a coincidence that they got into some argument that day she, that she was kicked out or thrown out or however it came about. And then she ends up running through the yards trying to flee away from something to never be seen again. I would also like to point out that he told one of the family members he didn't want to help search for her because... He was scared someone might do something to him. Personally, if anyone I loved was missing, I would have walked right up to whoever and said, let's get this out of the way so I can go find this woman. If I got beat up by someone, then at least they could say, they could not say that I didn't care and that I was out there helping to search. I wouldn't have sat at home for over a month without a care in the world. I wouldn't ever let my son just sit around the house um, I guess they're talking about his mother and, and his family. They, according to this, none of his family have helped to look for her. No one in his family has done anything to um, be a part of the search. Jeff came by the house as that we use as a base and asked for some flyers on day 10. Um... But after receiving texts Candy had sent to a couple of friends about him being abusive to her, how can you blame the family for feeling that way? And here's a letter. Uh, well, this is the same letter that I just quoted. This was from one of her family members just saying that he, you know, that she in the, in the I don't know if it was days or weeks leading up to her going missing that... Uh, she had let people in the family know that he had been abusive to her. And once again, once again, I just, you know, I I had not even, I had heard about that video, but I had never really sat down and watched it myself. And when I got ready to edit this past video that I made to post it to my channel, I came upon that link, and I and when I watched it, I said, I have to include that discussion because, you know, I'm just, I'm looking through some stuff to see if I find any more links or anything that might be more updated. I'm finding some links to some videos, but nothing more current. Um, this is dated, well, let's see, there's some posts on here on Reddit. The posts on Reddit are, for the most part, they are opinions, and you can point a finger at people who are innocent, and I'm not pointing a finger at anybody, like I said, from the past, people's, you know, the things that people do, but this guy did have a history of being arrested for drug use. I don't know anything about his history of being abusive to any other girlfriends or anything like that. I couldn't find anything. There may be some stuff on Reddit about that. His father, and this is one reason why a lot of people believe that this search was not as um, 
uh, expedited maybe. Some people believe this, that because his father used to be the sheriff of Floyd County and because he is a member or was a member of the sheriff's, I'm trying to find that, Blackburn's Ties to the Law. Here it is on Reddit. There's a video here. I will post the link in the... It's just... <laughs> it wants to jump over to just the video. 36-year-old Candy Green Gonzalez disappeared. This just goes on. Jeff Blackburn's father, John K. Blackburn, served as the former sheriff of Floyd County, where all this took place. He was also the president of Kentucky Sheriff Association until 2013. Could his ties to law enforcement explain the slow response to her disappearance? Um, this man, and this doesn't have anything to do with this directly that I know of, but he had been arrested himself while he was sheriff for um, DUI. And um, this is just from a Reddit user saying that's why they waited two weeks to even start searching. The family was out searching while the state police and the sheriff's office did nothing. Jeff Blackburn is not a real man because a real man never beats on a woman. And um, people are donating money to help hire a good lawyer. They would probably need to search outside of Floyd County and Pike County, and that's just a personal interjection and opinion myself. All law enforcement knows that the first 48 hours is the most crucial time not to wait 80 hours or weeks even to start searching for her. Police, um, from what I have heard, not much was done by local police to find her either. Police uh, checking old mines on Ivy Creek, but as far as I know, no one ever went to check. There was something, and I'll continue reading on this, but there was something that I read somewhere about uh, some people in a pickup truck who were supposed to have been on the roadway when she was walking along the roadway, and they were taunting her. Now, I don't know if this was true, and I don't know if this was the guys in the backyard on that are that are shown in this video that I'm going to link I don't know if they got into the truck and went out looking for her after she left or if this was someone else who chased her into that yard and scared her to run into that yard and if someone saw who it was and knew who it was would they say you know um it there's just a lot of um, people on here commenting about what they think. Being local to the area and knowing the history of the ex-sheriff and his family, I would almost guarantee that Jeff is the reason Candy hasn't been found. And to take it a step farther, Jeff's dad, John K. Blackburn, is using his police background and all the corruption that is rampant in that area to cover it all up. Now, I'll just say this before I go on. I don't know a whole lot about the Floyd County Sheriff's Office now. It may be true that they did help to cover things up when this guy was in office because, like I said, he was arrested for DUI while he was sheriff. That's not any... I don't want to say that's no big deal, but that's not unheard of because... Sheriff, you know, officers are humans and they do things and they break the law and they should be held accountable. I don't know what the accountability was there and as far as he, you know, I would have to look for that story. Um, I don't want to point a finger at the Floyd County Sheriff that's in office at this time because I don't know that much about that town as far as their sheriff and so this is just stuff that I'm reading from Reddit. Floyd County Sheriff's Department is hiding something. I would not doubt for one second that John asked John Hunt, who I think is the current sheriff, to cover this up. 
This is a very dense wooded area. Coyote and bars and snakes. Um, if her body was out there, something would have been found if they were searching. You know, her her shoes, her, her shoes were found. You know, she probably ran out of them, you know, as she was running to get away. Um, I would just say this to end this video because I don't have a whole lot to go on. I just want to say to the family, um, it, it angers me and upsets me, this video that I watched of these people. Now, this woman did call this girl's mom. And as a mother herself, she should have put herself in that mom's shoes and said, come inside or at least come into the porch, sit down, let's get a hold of your mom. If you can't get a hold of your mom, let's find someone else in your family that can come pick you up. And I think they said on the video that they called 911. I'm not sure if they did or not, but you can see and you can hear in their tone and the way they're behaving that to them this was all just some kind of funny and the, the woman herself appeared to be angry that this woman dared to venture into her backyard. The boys or the young men in the video seem to find it funny and taunting and, you know, it, it's just, it's sad to think that had they just acted a little differently, and I don't know how they feel right now, I don't know if they carry around any kind of, ups, you know, um, if it upsets them or if they don't care. I don't know, but I hope that they think about that if they ever find themselves in a, in a position where they would have to, you know. This girl's picture is still all around everywhere you go on Facebook and a lot of the missing persons sites. Um, I don't know what else to add to this. I'll just say that I hope that one day her family can find answers and get closure. Um, more than likely, as sad as it is, more than likely she's probably not coming back uh, of her own ability, you know, because that's just my personal thoughts. I hope I'm wrong about that, and one day, hopefully, we'll find out you know but I couldn't post the video that I had made without going and bringing this up about what these people you know um, how they how they just reacted to some stranger they acted as though she was some alien that had landed a spaceship in the backyard. They acted as though they had never laid eyes on a stranger or someone that they uh, couldn't believe some girl was walking around in their yard. It was like, the, you know, it was like they had, like she had invaded a country or something the way that they behaved without just going up to her and saying, listen, I don't know what's going on with you, but let's find out and let's try to get you some help and you know, if she was doing something wrong and if she was a danger of some kind, the police would have taken care of that. But that's my personal opinion about that. And um, there was something here I wanted to read. This was on Facebook. They did a water search for her. There's some photographs. I will... People did finally come out this year, and they did some ground searches, and, you know, they took four-wheelers and side-by-sides into the hills, and they searched, and they went on foot, and they went into the waterways, and they searched. But keep in mind, a lot of people uh, who are from our area in eastern Kentucky, we were hit with a really, really bad flood in the summer of this year and um you know whatever might have been hidden may be washed up from these floodwaters maybe one day something will be seen but 
honestly, if this girl was a victim of someone who never planned for her to ever be found, it's a very good likelihood that she may not because these hills and hollers and mountains are deep. And the people who live here, I didn't even know how deep and, and the hollers and stuff until a few years ago when we started getting out and riding side by sides and going back into some of these mountain roads. And there were places we didn't even go to, you know. I hope that I'm wrong and I hope one day this girl turns up and I hope her family gets closure one way or the other because they shouldn't have to go to sleep every night not knowing where this young woman is and her son deserves to be able to say when he's a little older, this is my story, you know. Thank you all for listening. I will link the video and a couple of other links in the comments if you want to look this up. And um, that's all I really have on this story. It's an ongoing case. And like I said, if any new updates come up, I will post